Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Tom Worth Jr. and today I am sporting the coveted I Voted sticker. Stop by on my way home from work tonight. Um, a few things. Uh, talked to talk to a friend who was telling me about uh, a friend of his that I also know going back to college. Uh, uh, a guy in oil and gas here in Texas. And uh, a a closet Harris voter. And I find that concept uh, pretty cool because I know there are so many of them. Um, people who, uh, if you're in oil and gas, <laughs> if you're in Texas, the, I know people like this. And uh, uh, not comparing this guy to all of them, but I know people in, in that field. And never in a million years could I ever see any of them uh, voting for Kamala Harris by the way they talk. And if this guy talks like they do, then I probably would never in a million years see him voting for Kamala Harris. Because because the Republicans are the oil and gas people, right? And, and if you're in that industry, you would think you would selfishly uh, put your own economic interest uh, ahead of democracy and ahead of sanity. Um, uh, one of the reasons was uh, his his son may be going off to a war that Trump could start. And I, again, I don't have any specifics on this. And I was I was thinking through that myself because in the comments repeatedly I used to get no more forever wars. And again, his commenters only parrot what he happens to be talking about at the time because that's what Fox News always amplifies uh, the propaganda arm of Donald Trump. And I haven't been hearing that lately in the comments, certainly, uh, but I know it was a thing for them. And I would combat that with, well, Trump Trump is the one that didn't get us out of Afghanistan. He talked about it, and he, quote, negotiated a deal, but he never did it. He was in office for four years. He never did it. He never got all of our troops out of Afghanistan. Joe Biden came in, got our troops out of Afghanistan. Um, you know, Democrats are known as the ones who don't want to be at war. Um, and Trump just, he never got them out. This is the thing. He always talks about what good deals he negotiates or that he will negotiate a deal, but he doesn't actually ever negotiate. Uh, he doesn't actually ever achieve anything. Um, what he did achieve was the release of thousands of Taliban fighters. And they went right back over there to fight against our guys. So so that's what Trump did. He just bolstered the other side and they could still kill our people until Biden got them all out. Um, so I was thinking about how this could look. Uh, there, there's a there's about three scenarios I came up with easy like off top of my head scenarios of what a what it would look like to have our our uh, young men and women over somewhere else getting shot at uh, by soldiers, by tanks, by missiles, by jets, by drones. Um, and and it's, it's pretty plausible, especially the third one, I think. Um, but uh, <laughs> there's, there's a few other news items today. One was uh, actually from yesterday, Mike Johnson at a Pennsylvania campaign stop talking about uh, uh, affordable health care, uh, and the Obamacare and uh, Alyssa or a watcher there, a, a person attending said, just to make sure he got it right, said no more Obamacare. And Mike Johnson very clearly said no more Obamacare. We're going to take a blowtorch to the regulatory state. Um, for those of you wondering what the regulatory state is, it is regulations. You know, laws, rules, the things that civilizations and societies are based upon. This is what Donald Trump's Republican Party wants to take a blowtorch to. Now, Trump, if you'll recall, said he, although he tried to tear down Obamacare, tried to get rid of it, and uh, John McCain famously uh, didn't do it, um, even Trump has backed off that publicly and said, no, it's too popular. This is what he says publicly. This is what Trump says publicly because he knows it's too popular. He knows he can't run on repealing uh, or t 
taking a blowtorch to Obamacare. So he says he's not going to do that. And the Trump campaign, when asked about this, uh, said, no, we're not going to do that. Well, we know Mike Johnson doesn't ever do or say or think any thought without a direct order from Donald Trump. So for him to have that in his mind, he's not going rogue. He's not going off script. This is what they're talking about. This is what the, the Project 2025 we've all been hearing about. Uh, it has stuff like this. The stuff that Trump knows um, will cost him the election if, if he owns up to it. But all of his people, including Speaker of the House Mike Johnson, are already working on. Mike Johnson talked about having people in Congress who have medical backgrounds already looking at how to do this. So this is what he said yesterday in public at the campaign stop. In Pennsylvania. So again, we have the Republicans lying. Like, is Trump lying? Is his campaign lying? Is Mike Johnson lying? They're all lying. And they're 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 <laughs> going against each other. So one of them's lying because they're saying the exact opposite things as each other. Um, it's it's just all lies, all confusion, all misdirection. Um, speaking of misdirection, uh, the Elon Musk, the paying people a million dollars, which I pointed out over the weekend. You can't do that. It's illegal. Well, he was immediately sued for doing that. Uh, and he has to actually, <laughs> he's been ordered to appear in court in, uh, in Pennsylvania tomorrow, I believe in Philly, um, to, to face these charges because you can't do that. And he actually paused his million dollar checks for a day or two and then started them up again. And this is what he does. And this is the thing I was talking about where he acts like he's Donald Trump. He acts like he can act with impunity and has appointed Supreme Court justices and federal judges to, to protect him. But he hasn't. Only Trump has. Only Trump has that protection. So, so Musk breaks laws and thinks he can just blatantly do it. And now he has to appear in a Philly courtroom tomorrow and, uh, that's pretty cool because I'm sure he wasn't planning on being in a Philly courtroom tomorrow. Um, another item today, Nate Silver. You know, he's not real popular with some watchers of this channel. Uh, just today on CNBC, I saw him point blank saying, do not trust prediction markets right now. Don't trust the polls right now. They're, they're, they're not accurate data right now. Um, he does still, full disclosure here, he still does feel Trump has a slight edge to win. He also thought uh, Trump had a 29% chance to win in 2016, which means he thought Hillary Clinton had a 71% chance to win on the eve of that election. We all know how that turned out. So I think he's, I don't know, gives Trump a little over 50% chance, something like that. But he's saying there's no hard data. He said the polls are, are being manipulated. He said they're they're being taken by old white people with landlines. His words, not mine. Uh, these are just, this is just nothing to, to base. He says the prediction markets are being manipulated by big money. Um, it's not any real data. There's no inside edge there that anyone has. So that's Nate Silver. <laughs> He's saying don't trust him. And I agree. Uh, don't trust him. Just go vote. Um, Another thing I saw today was uh, an incredible jobs report from ADP on private payrolls that came out this morning. It's a, a day before the actual government numbers come out tomorrow with, with the wider uh, employment numbers. But private payrolls, which is just private com just companies, um, blew the doors off of estimates. I think estimates were 100-something thousand jobs created, and it was over 200,000. So jobs are roaring right now it's the best jobs report since july of last year um uh let's see the nasdaq hit a new high this week uh bitcoins skyrocketing um it's all pointing up except for uh djt uh trump media that was down 22 percent today uh sad for him uh it it was halted multiple times yesterday for just ping-ponging around multiple times on huge volume uh, today down 22 percent um here's your financial update uh back to back to how we could get in a war well, there's there's a few ways we i mean trump already said he's gonna tell uh ukraine to stand down 
well, maybe Ukraine doesn't want to stand down. Maybe they want to take their chances without U.S. aid, knowing that it's impossible. But if if you're Zelensky, you know you are you are a dead man if the minute you surrender, not the minute, but basically as soon as you surrender, you have signed the death warrant of not only your country but of your own life. Um, he doesn't want to do that. He's a fighter. He's already bucked all the odds for for two years and and uh, eight months now, and. And Europe's on his side. Uh, he might just say, I, "I don't want, I don't want to stand down." And so, so Putin tells Trump, he's not asking, he's telling him, "Hey, I need your help, Trump. It's not enough to just cut off aid from Ukraine. I need you guys over here, just stopping the fighting." So Trump could send a peacekeeping force over there um, to Ukraine, just in the in the Russia versus Ukraine conflict. Um, we have a peacekeeping force now, say. that th Those are U.S. boots on the ground that aren't there right now uh, in the biggest conflict on, on Europe since World War II. That's what this is already without our involvement. Um, another way would be, uh, say, NATO actively just backs Ukraine. And they say to the U.S., you know what? We, we're going to do this without you. We are fully backing Ukraine now. Um, and then, uh, again, Trump is in the peacekeeping force, but now it's not just in Ukraine, it's just on, it's on uh, European countries because the reason this would happen is if Ukraine is falling or about to fall, and then Putin gets all of Ukraine's resources at his disposal. All the gas, all the oil, all the food, all the territory, all the manpower. He, he can conscript troops because he's run, he's just, he's, lost oh, hundreds of thousands of Russian lives in this conflict so far, to the point where North Korea has sent troops to Russia to help defend Russia. They're there now. They're, they're, North Korean troops are there. North Korea is not our friend. Russia is not our friend. Iran's not our friend. Uh, the third, <laughs> a third way that I saw it, I don't find it plausible, was we know Trump tried to or wanted to start a war with Iran when he was president and he was blocked from doing that by sane people in the room. Those sane people are not there. He, he doesn't want sane people. He wants people loyal to him, take the loyalty oath to him over the Constitution. This, this is what he's trying to do. So when he just wakes up on the wrong side of the bed one morning or has a bad round um, and he says, okay, launch him, well, they will launch him. And... If, if you think, I mean, so now you have Russia and North Korea and Iran, the, this axis that I've spoken of before, are three mortal enemies. This is who Trump would side with over our, our democratic allies in Europe and Japan. That this is, <laughs> so you would have a peacekeeping force, including U.S. soldiers, but you have... Iranian drones and North Korean troops actively shooting at us. I mean, would you want your child, son or daughter, to be stationed in Germany, to be stationed in Poland, um, to be stationed, I don't know, take your pick. Um, I wouldn't. <laughs> the commander in chief of Donald Trump, he is a madman. Who would ever want their children entrusted to that guy? And the generals he's he's going to have, you know, being the Joint Chiefs of Staff or or the, the Secretary of Defense or whatever it is. Um, I just, it was an angle that I hadn't really thought of, but the more I thought about it, the more, I mean, it's not, it's a, it's a real plausible uh, uh, fear, I would think. Um, man, I got a, I got a 23-year-old son and a 24-year-old daughter. Um... I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't love that. And I think that's a great point, uh, sir. So thank you for that. Um, that th this is what's on my mind today. The thing about thinking Kamala Harris is going to lose, but, but the stakes of her losing are, are as high as ever. And don't let my seeming uh, relaxed attitude fool you. It, this stuff keeps me up at night. Not, not that 
she'll probably lose, but what if? Um, it does. <laughs> And I'm, try, I'm trying to try to get by like everyone else, and I, and I think all the signs are there for her to win. But um, we have we we got to go vote. We got to get out there. We got to, you know, lunch hour on the way to work, on the way back from work. Like almost everyone I talked to has already voted. I felt like the last one, and it's just what it's gonna take. Um, it, the Madison Square Garden thing. <sighs> This is, he's all he's doing is setting the stage. He's trying to amp people up. He's not trying to win more votes to put him over the top. That much is clear. So what is he amping him up for? Well, we know what he amped him up for the first time around. Um, I, I, I just, I say get out there and vote and uh, get it in there, get it counted and uh, be, be at home watching <laughs> with the rest of the nation. Uh, a week from yesterday, uh, November 5th, and that should be a nice plan for, for all of us. So uh, that's it. That's it for today. That's it for tonight, Wednesday, and we will talk again tomorrow.